Hi everyone! In this video I want to show you how to make um, what I'm calling this odd shape and I promise you it is only made with C to C stitches. There's nothing magical about this. Um, it's just literally constructed by alternating starting rows with an increase and a decrease. Um, you have your ending yarn tail on one side, or I should say your starting yarn tail on one side, and then when you finish, your ending yarn tail will be on the other side of your shape, and you will work your shape in diagonals, turning your work like you always do. What makes this shape unusual um, and difficult, I think, to make is the fact that you know, typically when you work C to C, you have nice straight edges and you work, you know, on this angle. And in this shape, there's like a stair step pattern on both sides. Row one is one stitch like always. Row two is just this one stitch right here. Row three is two stitches, row four is two stitches, row five is three, row six is also three, row seven is four, and row eight is four. So as I feel like I've said this like a hundred times, but you really, really need to pay attention to if you're starting a row on an increase, or a decrease and then you need to count your stitches at the end of every row. You will turn your work after every row and you will work you know like up one row down the same row up the same you know you're, you're working on the same side. In the pattern I have a little graph of this shape and I actually numbered and I got this idea from somebody in the Facebook group actually um, but I numbered each stitch on the chart to help you to see the order that you work the stitches and when you look at the chart you would read it like you read any C to C chart you would say row one is just one stitch Row two is just these two. You would look at it on the diagonal. So I think the reason why this shape gives people so many problems is because people go into like automatic, like motor memory, autopilot, whatever you want to call it. They say, I know how to CTC and they just, they do something automatically and it throws off the shape. And the other thing is, is it, it'll look weird because I've never made a C to C shape like this before. I mean, it's just, it's gonna look like you're doing it wrong, probably. Um, and I think that makes it hard too. I also, um, when well, where I will have this video posted, I have like a, I wrote down like a cheat you could do. You know, you could just make a regular old four row triangle and make two of those and sew them together if this shape is really giving you a lot of heartache, it's just not worth it because this is such an easy and repetitive pattern that I don't want you to get too hung up on a shape that you only have to make a couple times. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this here. So row one, is just that one stitch. And I do have a C to C video if you need just to make sure you're on the same page with my terminology that I use in the pattern or if you just aren't very familiar with a C to C stitch. So you start the first stitch like you always do by chaining six and working three double crochets 
one in each of the fourth, fifth, and sixth chain from the hook. I always make my stitches in the back bumps of the chain and I just do that with anything I'm making. But you're welcome to do it in whatever chain loops you like to use. So here's my first stitch. And in looking at this shape here, row two is only one stitch. And in normal CTC, row two is usually two stitches. So one of those two stitches needs to be omitted. We have to work into this chain three loop here. So the stitch that I am omitting is the increase stitch. The stitch where you chain six and build another stitch on top of where you are and increase your stitch count from one to two. We're gonna leave that stitch out. So the way we leave it out is by what I'm calling a decrease. And again, like I said in the C to C video, I outline more, I don't know, thoroughly how to do the increases and decreases. So now I've decreased to my loop and I'm gonna work a stitch by chaining three and making three double crochets. So now I'm at the end of row two and I've only made two stitches. So now for row three, I need to make two stitches. I want, this is a row one stitch, so it doesn't count. So I just need to make a stitch in this loop here. And I also need to increase and make a stitch. I don't know what you guys like to call it on top of the side where I ended. So I'm going to increase by chaining six. And working my double crochets. And then I always make that increase stitch before I turn my work. So I still need to turn and then slip stitch. And make my second stitch. So here's the end of row three. And it's already looking funny. Well, it was looking funny at the end of row two, too. But it will probably trip you up a little bit right here because you are probably, you know, you're just so used to seeing things look like this. And now you have this extra thing hanging out here. But this is row one, and we're on row three, and we don't work and, you know, jump across rows. So we're going to just keep working in row two stitches. or excuse me, we're gonna work into row three stitches to make row four. So we have this shape here, and for row four, we only need two stitches, and we have two chain three loops here. One, two. So we don't need to add anything. We don't need to increase. So we are not going to chain six. We're just going to decrease and get into this loop and make a stitch here and here. So I just worked my decrease. I think I might have veered out of view a little bit. And then I'm going to chain three and make my two stitches. So that's the end of row four. Row five is one, two, three stitches. And again, we have one, two, chain three loops from row four that are available to us. We need to increase and build a stitch right here. So you'll chain six. and work your double crochets.
and then turn your work if you haven't already and continue working into the two chain three loops from the two stitches of row four. So now I'm at the top of row five. Row six is this diagonal right here. So again, I just need three stitches. I'm not putting anything in this space right here. So I'm gonna start with a decrease so I can just work one, two, three stitches. So I just made my decrease and I'm working my first stitch, slip stitching into the second space, working my second and now my third stitch for round six, excuse me, row six. And if I said round at any other point in this video, I meant row. So row seven is right here. One, two, three, four. I have one, two, three stitches that I made in row six and three chain loops available. I need four stitches, so I have to increase and build a stitch right here and then work in those remaining three stitches. So I just did my increase and remember I always build my increase before I turn. And I'm turning, I slip stitch into the first place and work my first, or it's really technically my second C to C stitch. And I have two more. So that's the end of row seven, and I have one more row left, and that's row eight. And I have one, two, three, four stitches, and I have one, two, three, four chain loops to work into. I don't need anything on top. I just wanna build my stitches right here. So I'm gonna start with a decrease. to get into that first space. And then chain three and make three double crochets. Slip stitch into the next space and just continue on down for four stitches. And then there you have it. My starting yarn tail is on one side. My finishing yarn tail is on the other side. I have eight across the bottom. And then I have a stair step pattern like I've talked about before. It's really important to um, maintain with this blanket. And I have four stitches going up, two at the top, and four stitches coming down the other side. And I don't really wanna to talk too much about left-handed stuff, but I feel bad for the left-handed people <laughs> that are struggling. Um, 
I believe you would just make this same shape just like I did, but you would start in this square. So this would be your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You would just kind of be doing everything, I think, in a mirror image and then have the same shape. Um, so hopefully after watching this, you guys should be able to do it. And like I said, um, you know, there's the cheat. You can just make a typical triangle and make two of those. Um, but I didn't do anything. You know, I just did C to C stitches and increases and decreases. Um, so just if you're struggling, if the row starts with an increase, chain six and work the three double crochets into the chain and then work down the side. If the row starts with a decrease, you're gonna chain three and slip stitch into the last chain three space you just made on your last stitch and work down the side. You're always gonna be working up and down the same side. You need to pay attention to your stitch count. So if you made two stitches previously in the previous row, you know, you, you can only work in those two stitches that you made in the previous row on the next row, unless you increase and add a stitch. You're not gonna, you know, work row one here row two and then work two stitches up and try to come down the side or do anything weird because this is you know you're not going to jump over skip rows like that so i hope this helps and if you need more you know like i said or i have i have been saying maybe not in this video but you're always welcome to reach out if you have any questions